Hi guys, my name is Bill, and in this video I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot the evaporator fan on your Whirlpool side-by-side -side refrigerator. I'm going to go over some of the symptoms that you'll have, and how to diagnose the problem, and how to repair it. Alright, so some of the symptoms that you might have is you come down in the morning or you come home from work, and you notice that you have water dripping out of the dispenser on your freezer door. So your ice cubes are starting to melt, but the stuff at the bottom of the freezer is still frozen. And if you can see my breath, because it's like 20 degrees in my garage, it's actually really cold. But back to the refrigerator problems. So the stuff at the bottom of the freezer is still frozen, but your ice is starting to melt. And in your refrigerator compartment, you notice that the stuff on the top of the shelves is starting to get warm, but the bottom of the refrigerator compartment is starting to freeze. And then the reason for that is because all the cold air is going to settle at the bottom. So the compressor is going to run non-stop because the thermostat that's at the top of the refrigerator compartment never gets to the temperature that it needs to, so it continuously runs. So the bottom of the refrigerator and the bottom of the freezer compartment are going to get super cold, but everything at the top is going to start getting warm. So that, that's one sure sign that you need to check the evaporator fan. Okay, so the first troubleshooting step that you want to do is if you have those symptoms, is go ahead and open up the freezer door. Now, if you don't hear the fan running, there still could be a couple other issues you wanna look for that could've caused it to stop running that might be a simple fix. You could have water leaking out of the ice maker, or you could have a defrost problem that are interfering with the fan actually spinning. So if you have some of those issues, now if you look in the back panel and you see that there's you know an inch and a half of ice built up on the back wall of your freezer, well, you probably got a defrost problem, and I'm gonna put a link in the description of this video. So if that's what you find, then you need to troubleshoot that problem, you know, specifically for a defrost problem and not an evaporator fan, because that evaporator fan is not spinning because it's probably froze up with some ice and it can't spin. And you could have some water leaking out of the ice maker. So if you see that you got some clear ice built up on the top, you know, portion of the back panel where it kind of bumps out a little bit, you know, that ice could have got into the fan blades and that's why your fan is not spinning. So a little hair dryer action and your fan's gonna start spinning again, but then you gotta troubleshoot why the water came out of your ice maker or out of the fill tube for the ice maker and then go from there. So in this video, I'm gonna show you where the power comes from for your evaporator fan. If it's not spinning, I'm gonna show you how to ohm out the, out, ohm out the fan so you can determine whether the motor's bad or if it's not getting power. So let's get into that. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the cooled control. I've done some videos on how to troubleshoot this. The defrost timer. In the description, there'll be some detailed videos on that. Now, where this meter is connected is to the neutral wire. It's the white, and that's the neutral for the motor inside the timer, which makes it advance. So where the power originates in this whole system is on this black wire. This is the constant power. You can see it goes over to the, the light switch here. So when this is open, power goes through the yellow, goes through a non-existent socket that used to be back here, and also runs up here, and goes to the back of the refrigerator where there's another light. So I'm gonna use this neutral for testing. And if we check this black wire, you can see we got 118 volts. And that's going to be constant whether this is on or off. If I turn this off, I'm still going to have voltage here. So when the thermostat needs to get cold, the contacts will close and power is going to come out on this orange wire down here. And you see I got 118 volts. So right now the refrigerator needs to get cold. So that's the same orange wire that's over here on the defrost timer plug. And you can see we got 118 volts. The refrigerator's trying to get cold. It's not in defrost, so that means we have power coming out on this red. So if I go into the red, I got my 118 volts. That red wire is what sends power to the compressor, condenser fan, and the evaporator fan inside the freezer. Now this pink wire is what sends power over to the defrost thermostat. So right now we don't have any voltage. But if I advance the timer around to the defrost portion of its cycle, then that voltage will go from the red wire over to the pink wire. 
So this is the flow of power coming in from the wall, out of the thermostat, and over to the defrost timer, where that says either send power to the defrost system or send power to the cooling system. With the refrigerator turned on and our leads connected to the evaporator fan motor, the meter set on volts AC, you should get 120 volts like in the picture here, and the fan motor should be spinning. If you have 120 volts and the fan is not spinning, most likely it's defective and we'll check it for ohms. Now for this test, I got the refrigerator unplugged from the wall, the wires removed from the evaporator fan, I got my leads connected to the terminals, meter set on ohms, and we're getting about 47 and a half ohms, and that's a good reading for this fan motor. If you get an OL reading when you're checking for ohms, then the windings are burned up, and the voltage can't pass through the motor and let the fan spin. What I'm gonna do now is show you how to remove the fan. So the first thing you wanna do is get the fan blade off, and just get that popped out of the way. Try not to break it. And the next thing we're gonna do is undo the clip that holds the motor to the assembly there. And once you got that out of the way, the only thing holding that fan in place now is a little rubber grommet. And we just wiggle that out. And there it is. Pretty easy to remove. And there's a close up look at it. You can see I got a couple wires attached to it with a little plug. Something I probably salvaged off another piece of electronics. And we're going to plug it into the wall. And we know this fan motor is good. That's just something that you want to test. But don't touch those wires. You blow yourself up. Okay, so before I finish this video, I want to give you one pro tip for those of you who have not worked on a refrigerator before, especially with a defrost problem or a bad fan. Make sure you wear gloves. And if you're not gonna wear gloves, when you work on your refrigerator, especially when you're behind the freezer panel checking the fan and you know maybe the defrost system or something like that, your fingers will stick to anything that's metal in the back. So if you're not gonna wear gloves, make sure somebody is standing close by with a little bit of water that they can pour on your fingers to free it from either the evaporator fan motor or the evaporator coils themselves. I'm telling you, I can't count the number of times that not wearing gloves, I've reached in to grab a hold of a fan and my hand was stuck. So that's just a pro tip there for those of you who have not worked on a refrigerator before, especially behind the freezer panel. For those of you who do do service on a regular basis and stuff like that, I know you know what I'm talking about. So be sure to chime in on the, in the comment section to let those people know that, yeah, your hand's gonna stick and it's gonna be pretty painful, especially when you're stuck there. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you do that now. If you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, well, of course, you can give it a thumbs down. And thanks for watching.